The Frituals, written and performed by author Caitlin Costello. Chapter 17. Shauna. Paulo, something feels wrong, I murmur as we crouch at the edge of the forest. The camps are quiet, not a single soulless dark one in sight, not even a watchman. You feel it too? I thought it was just me. We have to move, though. Of course we have to move. I just can't shake it. The feeling hangs in the air like the chill that comes after the rain. I know what you mean. I say we talk like this from now on. But careful. Don't say anything important. They might be listening. His voice gently settles into my head, echoing slightly. After Serena spoke to me, mind communication was something we practiced. I st- still couldn't initiate a conversation, but I could block him, shove him out, and end a conversation, which was a good start. I nod in approval, then point to us, then the plane. Let's move. Ready? I'm ready. We move as quietly as we can, crouching low in the grass, trying to hide our faces in the dim light. The grass hisses as it drags across our clothes. I look under the edge of my hood and notice all the braziers. Pass my short sword between my hands, wiping the clamminess off my hands on the edge of my cloak. On the ground is what seems to be shimmering black liquid, crossing the earth, leading back to the braziers. What is that? Paulo examines it for a moment as I keep watch. Still no movement. My heart races as anxiety flows through me. Black magic. Some sort of alarm. Don't touch it. We don't want to alert anyone. Sounds good to me. We step lightly, tiptoeing over and around the alarms. When it's gone, shrinking back like snakes, slithering so fast we can hardly react. I think my cloak hit it. It's triggered. Go! Run! Run! Paulo shouts aloud, forgetting about the mind link. We begin running as fast as we can, our packs thumping against our backs. Whatever happens, run. Don't look back don't stop. The braziers flare, flames jumping to five feet high. Dogs howl and strain at the ropes, holding them still. I pull the hood of my cloak higher. Go, Shauna, run! Go! I push the energy from the fear I feel into my legs as men can be heard moving about. I glance around, but I can't see Paulo. Where did you go? Off to my right, I hear a cord snap, and a dog is free. It's coming straight for me. I keep running, but keep it in sight. It's a huge dog. A monster of a dog. He gets closer with every step I try to get away from it. I clumsily readjust my sword. The dog jumps and I slash. In doing so, I miss the dog and I miss my step too, landing face first in the dirt. I gasp for air, crawling a few feet before I push myself up. Shauna, stop! Stop running, let me help you. Was it? No, it couldn't be. I spin on my heel to face him. Please, Shauna, let me help you, Philippe shouts, running towards me. I, uh, Philippe, no, I can't stop. What are you doing here? Run, run. I want nothing more than to stop and let myself be carried away to safety, but that wouldn't be happening right now. We need to stay on the move. I can't see the dog anymore, but I doubt it would give up on its prey, me, that easily. It is the Dark Ones. It has to be a spell. This can't be him. Shauna, come on, let's just talk, he said before getting knocked aside by soldiers as they come running towards me. Philippe, run! I shriek as the dark ones circle me. Nice blade there, pretty. Wanna dance? One sneers. He stabs at my leg and somehow I manage to dodge it and keep moving. You can't run forever, he says right behind me. We have you surrounded. I spin, sword held up in front of me. It feels so heavy and useless in my hands. It's better than nothing, right? He is right. They are all around me, circling me like I am their prey. Back off. I'm warning you, I say, trying to sound strong, but I'm nervous. My hands are against liquid sweat and shaking from fear. I reach down and uncork the water canteen at my side. Don't make me repeat it. A man jabs a sword at me, and I swing and swing, trying to keep him back. Another comes from behind, and I manage to spin around just in time. 
My blade slices through skin and muscle as he reaches for me. The red droplets cover me as he screams in pain, holding the arm to his chest. I splutter at the metallic taste coating my lips and try to smear it away before another man takes his place as he falls back. I try to run through the gap that opens, but they push me back and they creep inward, their swords a ring of death around me. Get away from me! I screech as they swarm me. Barak Akatura! I shout, and the soldiers finally take a step back. Water flows from the canteen on my hip and slips into my hand. It slides down like a snake, coiling in my hand, floating above the ground. I look around, trying to intimidate them, and snap my water whip once. Twice. They try to lash at it, but it does nothing for them. The whip is water, but when I strike at them, it is like supple leather. But if they try, they pass straight through it, and then it reforms. They lunge again, and I snap the whip. It leaves a large red welt across one man's face, inches from his eyes. I reach to the ground where my sword has fallen and hold it in my hand, ready to strike. I grip the blade hard, hoping that if I put all of my attention into the way my fingers gripped the hilt, they wouldn't be able to see my hand shake. Shauna, it doesn't have to be this way, Philippe says, pushing his way into the circle. Philippe, what the hell are you doing? Run! Get away from them! Shauna, you don't have to fight anymore. You're safe here. Safe? Are you kidding me? I spin away from him, keeping the dark ones always in my sight. What did they do to you? They didn't do anything to me, he says, placing a hand on my shoulder. Get away from me, I growl, raising the whip, locking eyes with him. You won't hurt me, he says so arrogantly. And what makes you so sure of that? I ask, even though I know that he is right. I won't hurt him. Not bad, at least. My arm still has blisters from him. Look. Look what they did to our home. They locked everyone up. Let's stop this and talk. He makes a motion like wiping away dirt from a window, and with a hiss, my whip is gone, vaporized into nothing. I- how did you do that? I ask, stunned. I think about calling more water to me, but I can already feel the draining effects of the whip. Those answers will come in time. Just go with me now, he says, pulling me to him, and he even goes as far as to pull the sword from my hand. Shauna, are you all right? I... No. Not now. Go. I say, shoving against Paulo, pushing him out of my mind. But, Paulo says, pushing back against me, trying to stay. Get away, Paulo. I say, pushing him away mentally as I struggle physically to get away from Philippe. Stop fighting, Shauna. You are safe now, Philippe says, pinning my hands behind me and wrapping a cord around them. Stop fighting, please. If he sees you fighting, it won't work. They will hurt you. Stop. We can be together this way. What are you talking about? Please, just let me go. If I were truly safe, then you wouldn't tie me up. I strain against the cords binding me. They cut deep into my skin, but hold. Why? Why are you with them? Why are you tying me up? Just let me go. I can't do that. You must know I can't, he says, shaking his head. I manage to pull myself away from him and stumble. The drained feeling that comes from using my powers is settling over my body. I will have to use the remaining strength I have to get myself free, even if it could be dangerous. Aka hoden das Philippe cuts me off, covering my mouth. No. No more spells. He will hurt you. Who, Philippe? You're making no sense. He will hurt me if I fight? Who are you talking about? I snap when he moves his hand away. He is talking about me, a voice says from behind Philippe, who gives me a pained look, then releases me and turns. How? But you, you died. I watched my sister kill you. Damien just grins. Oh, don't worry. I did die. However, my friends here know dark magic. Obviously. A little ritual or two, and here I am. He pulls up the front of his shirt. I still have this. I think I will return the favor to your sister. My face grows hot, and I have to bite my tongue not to scream a slew of obscenities at him. He just laughs at me. Oh, don't hold back, 
I want to hear what you have to say, he says, bending to pluck up my fallen blade. A fat lot of good that did me. Why don't you tell me where your friend is? I don't know what you're talking about, I say, eyeing the blade still speckled with the soldier's blood. He touches the point of the sword to my shoulder, putting a little pressure on it. I think you do, Damien says, and pulls the point along the edge of my dress. I don't know. He presses harder, stopping the point in the hollow of my throat. I don't just think you do. I know you do. You are with the Earth Ritual. My brethren have been looking for him for a long time. Where is he? I don't. He presses the blade in, and I try not to wince as I feel it pierce my skin. Hot, sticky blood slips down my chest. I swallow. I don't know where he is. I croak. Damien looks at me, disbelieving every word. We didn't tell each other where we would go. We didn't want to both get caught by you. He pulls the blade back and stabs it into the ground. You told me she would cooperate. He snaps at Philippe. I thought she would. She... Stop. Shut up. Stop your stammering. Did you really think I would willingly go with you? I say, wishing yet again I was free so that I could fight. To show what I had taught myself. Get her in a tent, Damien says with a wave of his hand. Hi everyone, I wanted to pop in and let you know, until all the stars are found, my newest book is now available for pre-order. This young adult science fiction novel will be published on March 6th, 2021. Click the link in the show notes to see where you can pick up the book today. Hi everybody, this is Caitlin Costello, the author and narrator of The Frituals. If you've enjoyed the podcast so far, please leave a rating or review wherever you enjoy your podcasts. It really helps the podcast to get in front of so many more people. If you can't possibly wait another second to know what happens next in The Frituals, fear not, for the full audiobook is now available, or you can get the print edition from CaitlinCostello.com signed. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next time. This has been a production of The Frituals, written and performed by Caitlin Costello. Text copyright 2018 to Caitlin Costello. Production copyright 2020, Caitlin Costello.